Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Disruptive Investing. And I saw that Ford's Blue Cruise, which is their level two driver assistance system, got approval last week in Germany from the Federal Motor Transport Authority, or KBA, for use on German roads. Well, let's be clear that this is only approved for certain stretches of highway, which Ford calls blue zones. Correct. Yeah, it's not like full self-driving software that can drive through cities or anything. But I saw this story along with the approval that BMW got back in June for their level two ADAS system by the KBA and Mercedes-Benz's drive pilot system that they got approved for back in May of 2022. That's their level three system that actually allows for hands off and eyes off the road. And that's being offered on their EQS models. And I thought, you know, this is really misleading for people who read about this technology, but don't experience it themselves firsthand. What do you mean? Well, I mean, if you read that, you might think, wow, okay, so Ford, BMW, and Mercedes-Benz are in the lead in autonomous driving because Germany, which is a huge auto market, in fact, the largest in Europe, just granted these three companies approvals. Not to mention the fact that Ford's uh, Blue Cruise in almost every article you read about was voted best ADAS by Consumer Reports last January, beating out competitors like GM and Tesla. Right. So it would be understandable if after reading articles like that, if you drew the conclusion that Tesla was way behind in autonomous driving systems. We're rather fortunate that we get to drive on a weekly basis in cars that have these systems. Right. We drive Teslas, Fords, Rivians, and we've driven many others. And after software updates, we get to test out new features and compare them to one another. And to me, it feels like we're living in some kind of bizarro world where I continually read articles about Ford's Blue Cruise, GM's Super Cruise, Rivian's Pilot Plus, etc. I also read articles about robo taxi companies like Waymo and Cruise in San Francisco. And if Tesla gets mentioned at all, it's usually derided as this failing attempt at full self-driving. But that doesn't match our experience behind the wheels of these vehicles. Precisely. I thought part of my frustration lies with the journalists themselves. Yeah, I mean, none of them seem to actually want to experience any of these systems firsthand. They just want to regurgitate press releases from companies. But then I thought, maybe I shouldn't be frustrated at the journalists who put their name on the articles. Instead, maybe I should be frustrated with the publications that publish what amounts to basically meaningless, misleading news. I think that's why so many people have turned to places like YouTube where you can get to see these cars in action and you get more of a firsthand perspective on how they operate. Yeah, there are many people out there who will show you actual drives in Teslas, in autopilot and full self-driving. To me, I find that data really useful because then you can judge for yourself how the car handles the environment. What I don't tend to see are many videos of other systems from other automakers. And so I get it. People are busy. They don't have time to research this in depth and watch hours and hours of footage or go take test drives in different models of cars. Yeah, they have to rely on the media to inform them about what's going on with technology. So I'm here to tell you, as an independent source of news, someone who's been following this closely every day for the last eight years, you're being lied to. You're being misinformed. Not only is that a problem if you're interested in buying one of these automobiles, but it's certainly a problem if you're trying to be a well-informed investor. So on Tesla Time News this week, we showed this X post from John Ehrlichman. He said the value today of $100 invested 10 years ago. And I was thinking, do you see any legacy automakers on this list? Um, no. So I looked up Ford and I saw that Ford was trading at $17 a share back in September of 2013. Today, well, here you go. It's $12 a share. So your $100 investment will be worth 72 bucks. And it's not like there was some huge gain that you should have seen and gotten out on or anything like that. It's just been pretty middling. Yeah, exactly. And on the other hand, you could have put it in Tesla. So why is this? Well, because Ford isn't innovating. CEO of Ford, Jim Farley, has stated that Ford spends $500 to $600 per vehicle it sells on advertising. In 2021, Ford spent about $2 billion on advertising just in the U.S. alone. So what do you think you get for spending that much money on the media? Well, I mean, everyone knows, you know, you, you buy an ad slot and then they play an ad and they say, buy a Ford. It's really good. We think that you're going to like it. And that's all you get. Right. Because that's that's what an advertisement is. Yeah. Don't be naive. Uh, they're not just spending money to run ads. They're spending money to influence what the media says about their products. I mean, think about it. Right. If you spend that much money, I mean, you can't even imagine two billion dollars. Can you right now? Just stop for one second. I know we throw these, right. this word around every day now in, on Earth. We say the word billion. When I was a kid, we never said the word billion. Okay. So $2 billion, that means that when you spend that on ads at, at, you know, the New York times, and you happen to see that they're working on an article about something, you get to call them up and you get to go, remember 
we spend a lot of money on your newspaper, so could you put this little quote in your article? Right. Or could you mention Blue Cruise? Yeah. And they have to do it. And and they don't necessarily have to hold it over their heads. They don't have to say it explicitly. Right, but they go, you know what? Our ad budget next quarter might be dropping. Right. And you know how there's those like um, social media posts or just even with your friends, you'd be like, hey, would you punch someone in the face for a million dollars? And it's like, you know, you're like, hmm, I have to think about that. For $2 billion, um, what do you think even large corporations, news organizations are going to do? That's how they pay for themselves. These large news organizations are largely just advertising platforms. So if they don't get ad money, they fold. So it's bad enough that this will misinform consumers. Yeah, worst case, as a consumer, you'll buy a Ford product and you're not happy with it. But if 10 years ago, you'd invested a big chunk of your savings into Ford stock, you'd be looking at a portfolio that would now be deeply in the red. All because you were misinformed. So one of the big problems with innovation in the media is that the media is trying to get eyeballs on its articles and news stories. And companies that are busy innovating are generally not that interesting to write about because they aren't busy making splashy demos. They're busy developing the coding and the testing. And who wants to read about that? Companies like Ford have whole departments and marketing divisions that they can come up with these splashy names for their supposed technologies. They're very good at packaging what they have to look appealing. But I just got back from a multi-state drive in our Ford F-150 Lightning, which I drove almost entirely in Blue Cruise. And it performed way worse than Autopilot 1, which Tesla developed in 2016. Now, I can tell you unequivocally, there is no way that Ford is going to develop a better autonomous software package than Tesla. I'm willing to stake my reputation on it. I wish I could give you a bunch of fancy charts and graphs and statistics to prove that I'm right. But that's the problem with innovation. Until it becomes revealed to everybody, it's only apparent to a few what is actually going to happen. I keep looking for people and sources to dissuade me, to counter my argument, to offer convincing claims that I'm wrong. But I haven't found them. In fact, just the opposite. I find poorly researched, misleading articles about, quote, competing technologies to Tesla that don't convince me at all and that I can refute using first principles by hopping in their car and trying it. Case in point, I tried Ford's Blue Cruise lane changing. I was able to get it to change lanes once on this trip I just made. And that one time I did it, it almost drove me off the road. Whereas I've driven Sparky, my Model X with AP1, through dozens and dozens of states in all kinds of weather, snowstorms, rainstorms, dust to dawn, dawn to dusk, it's close to perfect. And this isn't even the technology that matters. If you've watched this far in the video, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. What matters is fully autonomous driving cars that learn to drive by watching video data put through a neural net with weights assigned to them. It may sound simple, but it's not. And nobody but Tesla is doing it. In fact, they've all gone down the wrong road. They're using technology like LiDAR that looks and sounds really futuristic, but like Elon says, is just a crutch. When Tesla releases a version of full self-driving that is better than a human driver, it's going to change life as we know it. All the arguments about how autonomous cars can't live on the roads with human drivers will go out the window. People will demand this technology, and the only company that will be able to deliver it, either through buying their cars directly, taking a robo-taxi from them on the Tesla network, or through Tesla licensing this technology to other automakers, will be Tesla. And when investors finally figure that out, guess what's going to happen to the value of Tesla? It's kind of like what happened here to Amazon stock value when investors finally figured out that people were going to start buying pretty much everything from them online. Take a look. It just sat there. I mean, it was going up, but it just sat there because people thought, well, it's an online bookstore. Pretty boring. And then one day people went, you know, I just used it to buy my Christmas presents and it really worked. And I think the thing is, and we've talked about local maxima before, the the concept of a local maxima is that you get to this point where you can't go any higher, mm -hmm. right, on the mountain. Um, but it, there is some other slopes, but you have to go back down in order to go back up. Mm -hmm. And there are examples of this in nature. Like, for example, the Nautilus is a very, very, very old kind of uh I don't know. It's not a fish. It's like a shelled creature. Mm -hmm. And it stopped developing its eye a long time ago. So in our eyes, we have lenses and stuff like that. So we get more light in. It has a pinhole camera eye. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a literal hole. Seawater goes in and out of the hole. And all it can really see is like, oh, is there something over there? I think there's something over there. And I'm going to swim over to it. Um, it has not evolved past that point because it has reached a local maxima where it's like, oh, this is good enough. But once I start evolving an eye that's you know, kind of worse in order to, you know, put a, 
you know, protector over my eyes so the seawater doesn't come in, which could eventually turn into a lens. Um, it actually works. So that that creature will die more frequently than the ones that just have the, the pinhole camera. Mm-hmm. This is where we're at with all the these other autonomous driving uh, car companies. And of course, it's better than like a car that has no f- full self-driving at all. They're like, look, it can kind of drive around. And when we put cones in front of it, it goes around the cones. Um, and sure, the whole trunk is taken up with a massive computer, which draws about yeah, can two I, kilowatts of power. Can I talk about that for a second? Um, this gets missed all the time. Their systems, like Jesse just said, uses so much power. And guess what? It's an electric car. So power, you have to be very careful with the power. Yeah. Tesla's system uses how many watts? Like 100? Like 100. So even if their system were just as good, it's not just as good in the power consumption area. So yeah. even if they could get the system somehow to work with LiDAR and stuff, all that stuff has to be powered. And so their range will drop and they'll have to spend most of their time charging. That never gets talked about. Again, the media doesn't cover it because the media doesn't even understand it. They're not told that in the press release, mm-hmm. so they don't talk about it. They right. go, oh, I'm not going to talk about what's in the trunk because no one told me to talk about it. They're just mouthpieces. The problem is. I think what's happening is so many people have been told not to listen to Elon Musk because he's just a bad person and you should hate him. So there's just these blinders that go up where they're like, anything to do with Elon, SpaceX, boring company, Neuralink, Tesla, I'm not going to follow it because that guy's a jerk. Okay, don't. But if you're an investor, you'd be stupid not to. Right. Well, it's kind of like. I don't know, like North Korea. Like anytime you hear a story about North Korea, you go like, oh, North Korea. I'm not saying that I like North Korea. I don't. Um, But it would be it's it's kind of like any story coming out of North Korea. I just put on blinders. I go like, I don't really want to hear. But they have nuclear weapons. Right. I don't I don't want to learn anything about it. I don't really actually know that much about North Korea, mainly because I just go like, oh, that's crazy dictator guy. But what I'm saying is they have nuclear weapons. It's important that we do actually follow what's going on there and try and get along with them. But that's the problem with Tesla. So many people put on their blinders. They go, like, I don't know what's going on. Imagine if North Korea was working on autonomous driving cars. They're not. um, But imagine if they were. They probably are. And everyone was going like, oh, I don't want to know about it. Right. And then one day North Korea, I don't know, rolls out a huge fleet of full self-driving cars and people are going to go like, I don't want to get on the North Korea car until they basically economically have to. Um, And I think that that's going to be the same thing that's going to happen here with Elon Musk is people are going to go like, well, I you know, oh, I don't want to get on that car. And the first 10 cars that are on the road. Yeah, maybe no one not no one. We obviously know that there's millions of people who will get on these cars um, and. No, it's a really good point. It's a really good point because the Cybertruck is a perfect example. There's Mm -hmm. plenty of people who are just all in, Mm -hmm. but there's plenty of people who are like, I would never even look at that That truck. So guess what? They're all wrong. I'd like to, you know, record your friends saying that at Mm. work. okay? because you'll be able to play it back for them in a few months and they will all be shown to have egg on their face. It's just a matter of being able to fool themselves. And it's really easy to fool yourself. When you have a whole bunch of people telling you that you're right, that you're right. It's it's kind of like being at the soccer game and, you know, saying that the all the 10 year olds suck at playing soccer. It's like it's true. Right. Nobody wants <laughs> to say that um, because it doesn't help anybody. Um, but in this case, it's kind of like we have um, a world soccer star on the field and a whole bunch of 10 year olds and everyone's going like still giving the participation right. trophies to everybody. Right. Oh, Jimmy, you were so good. That one time you happened to be standing in the way of the ball and you blocked it from going in the net. Good job, Timmy. Right. Wow. I, I don't want to get hyperbolic. It's hard to like, it's hard to really nail it down, but it's, it's like who else is working on this in the right way? That's the big deal when it comes to full self-driving. Well, and we saw an interesting tweet this week from Ray, right? That Chinese companies are willing to go, oh, that's the way to go. Let's just copy him. Mm-hmm. You may not respect that. It's not innovative, but it's better than going in the wrong direction for mm-hmm. much longer. They see that Elon's right. So if companies that are worth billions of dollars are going, oh, that's the smart guy to copy, you got to be thinking, well, they know what they're doing too. Right. And just to point out why I keep saying Ford and GM will fail, they're not pivoting. Even when they find, like, look, at some point you go, you know what? He's my enemy, but he's doing the right thing. I should copy him. Mm -hmm. Um, But they go, nope, nope, nope. Well, all right. Good luck. We'll see you guys next week on Disruptive Investing.